the final panel. It's the vaguest titled panel of all. The Adventurer's Tavern. What is the Adventurer's Tavern? It is where returning legends of Adventure X come to say some opinions. People who have spoken at Adventure X before. I'm going to try and coax cancelable hot takes out of them. And I, I suspect they're going to resist me and probably drop gems of wisdom or something. That's what usually happens in these situations. The panel are, and this is going to be awkward because I'm going to have to hand over the microphone. Jade Liam Charisco. I guess, oh, can, can people hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Um, hello, my name's Jade Sheha. Um, I'm a freelance music composer. I've been a huge regular of AdventureX for many, many years now. I think I'm just gonna, nope, okay, Ali's busy. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been here um, for like a lot. <laughs> Um, so it's really, oh don't say that, okay, 10 years, <laughs> okay, yes, I, I've been here um, since definitely before the rebrand, um, so it's been really, really great to see everyone here, old and new faces, and yeah, that's me, hello. Um. <laughs> uh, the next we have Francisco Gonzalez. Hi, uh, is, this, is this working now? Can you all hear me? Hello? Yes, all right, cool. Hi, I'm Francisco. Uh, I'm an indie adventure developer. I've made a few games. Uh, you may know my work, Lamplight City, uh, Shard Light, A Golden Wake, the Ben Jordan series, if you're real old. Uh, old green pants, as a matter of fact. I'm wearing green pants. And you have red hair. I'm, I am a life you are the a, ultimate a tribute ben to Jordan. Ben Jordan. Yeah, you're yes. the ultimate uh, Ben Jordan cosplayer. Uh, this is my sixth Adventure X. I'm very happy to be back. I'm very happy to see you all. I did not realize how much I missed this until I got here. Uh, and yeah, that's me. Hi. <laughs> In the next seat, we have Shella Ramanan. Hello! Hi, yeah, my name is Shella Ramanan. I am a narrative designer and writer. Um, my debut game was Before I Forget, I'm co founder of Threefold Games. Um, I'm also at Ubisoft Massive, um, working on the Avatar project. And um, my other game is Windrush Tales, which is in pre-production. And uh, how many, I think this is my fourth Adventure X. Uh, the first was I exhibited Before I Forget, which was our first like real event. And it was lovely. And um, we made great friends there. And um, then a couple of years later, I did a talk on Black Panther and um, Afrofuturism. Um, so that's me. And finally, John Ingold. Hello, John. Hi, I haven't tested my microphone. Yeah, brilliant. I'm John Ingold. I'm the narrative director of Inkle. I've been coming to Adventure Act almost the entire time, except for that one when it was above a pub. But I tell everybody that I came to that one because I wish I had been there. Um, I've spoken here about five or six times now, I think. Uh, I think I'm responsible for AdventureX's most viral talk, which was a dialogue thing that Kotaku wrote about. Um, they didn't pick up any of my other talks, so I can't <laughs> thank them for that, though. They're clearly uh, quitters. Um, <laughs> Inkle, uh, we make the ink scripting language. We've made 80 Days, Heaven's Vault, uh, Pendragon, Overboard. We're working on a game called The Highland Song, so I've done quite a bunch of games for a few years now. So hello, everyone. What's going to happen is I'm going to ask four questions to the panel, seamlessly pass the mic to Jade uh, <laughs> after each question, and then after that, if there's any time left, I'll throw it open to, to you. Um, you will also not have microphones, so you'll know what it's like to be me <laughs> shouting into the void when that happens. My first question is, I think a lot of the people here are probably freelancers. I think most people who work in indie games have freelanced at some point. So my first question is, what tips and tricks have you developed for... 
procrastination. Jade. So, um, I've become slightly addicted to playing solitaire <laughs> and listening to daytime TV in the background. I say listen, but I'm actually slowly getting absorbed into watching that and watching Judge Judy reruns. So I'll have, I have like, like my, my email client up. I'm like, okay, I should probably email this person. And then, you know what, I'm gonna make a tea. <laughs> and then I'll get distracted and then I'll keep going back to the kitchen to put the kettle on. And then that cycle will repeat like, like maybe two or three times. I'm like, oh, I completely forgot about the kettle being boiled for my tea or coffee or whatever. And then, oh, the button is just there to play solitaire, and then <laughs> that, that's, that's currently how I procrastinate. Um, how about everyone else? <laughs> I, um, this is a hard question for me because I've realized I'm a workaholic. I, I've tried developing new hobbies over the course of the pandemic. I tried painting minis for a little while. Not Warhammer, just like I actually made little minis of my adventure game protagonists because that's how much of a nerd I am. And I started painting them, and I was like, oh, this is fun. And then I stopped, and I joined a book club, and I was like, oh, this is nice. But then I'm like working weekends because I can't stop working on my game. So, and yet it's been three and a half years. So I'm like, OK, well, I guess I need a new hobby, but I haven't found one yet. So if anyone has any suggestions for a good way uh, for me to procrastinate, I know this is completely opposite of what the question was. <laughs> but. I'm open well, to suggestions. We had a five minute gap before the talk started and you used that time productively to market your game. Exactly. So that, this, exactly, you see? This guy never stops. <laughs> no, I don't, it's terrible. Shut up, how about you? Procrastination, so the question that you wrote to us was about missing deadlines. Um, so I used to be a journalist, a games journalist, so missing deadlines wasn't an option. <laughs> um, but video games is kind of expert at missing deadlines because we just move the deadline. We don't actually ever miss them. We just <laughs> move them further away. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, but in terms of procrastination, when I was freelance and working from home before it was cool, um, like <laughs> pre-pandemic, um, I did actually sponge clean the leaves of my house plants. I've done that before. So you just like you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I really don't want to write this article or whatever. And just like, oh, that plant's really dusty. That <laughs> <laughs> I have done that before. <laughs> John, how clean are the plants in your house? I don't know what plants I have in my house. I have no idea. I'm I'm with Francisco. I'm a workaholic, and I don't tend to see anything apart from the work I need to do, um, except that I have kids. I don't know how many people in this room have kids, but when you have kids, you don't really get the option to procrastinate anymore because if you're wasting time, someone will sit on you and demand something <laughs> of you. And unless you can say to them, go away right now, I am busy. And now they're older, they say, really? Show me what you're doing. <laughs> and you go, okay. And you know, my daughter will say, that's Twitter, dad. It's not a real job. And I, <laughs> It is a bit, and she's not, increasingly it is not. And I go, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. So recently I've discovered a really effective way of procrastinating, which is to procrastinating by doing other work. So I spent most of my lockdown writing novels, which is definitely not my job, um, in order to avoid writing computer games, which was my job. Um, so that's not a very good answer, but it, it is the truth. Um, uh, we also have a scripting language, which we built over several years, <laughs> which is similar. He's trying to uh, sell his books now. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Even in this time, this is outrageous. But see, you say that has just made me realize I procrastinate doing like household chores by working. So it's like, it's time to clean the bathroom. <laughs> sorry, I can't. I, I have to do this rotoscoping animation or something like that. So. That's terrible. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> we've, Finding we've... a Spotify playlist to work to, that is a good way to procrastinate. Mm. Just like, mm, no, not Baroque, not today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Jade, I feel so bad that I pulled this microphone away from you. <laughs> Are you happy for me to proceed to question two? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't even see you as well. If you need the microphone, just wiggle your hands. Sure, that's, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, it'll be straight in there as soon as I see that. Let's move on to question two. That was so seamless and smooth, just like a real conversation. Um, 
on the subject of uh, children raised by John, a, a child, an innocent child, has sent me a letter saying that it's their dream to get started in the games industry. So question two is, how would you discourage this child? <laughs> Um, before I answer this, I just wanted to ask, like, how dark should I go? <laughs> um, like, I, I don't know, like, if, if anyone wants to start this off, because I'm... <laughs> yeah, again, like, how, how dark should we go, like... Just, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um... How do you discourage people from making games? I mean, when people, when people say enthusiastically, oh, I really want to make games, they usually aren't saying, I want to make games, are they? They're usually saying, I've got an amazing idea for a kind of alien that you could shoot, and it would explode in a certain way. <laughs> they very rarely say, I've got a really good idea for a solid crafting loop involving loot boxes hidden behind dead ends that are reached with a triple jump. Like, that just doesn't happen. So I think it's quite difficult, because when, when I've been spoken to by children who want to make games, they usually they usually start talking, and it's quite hard to even get a word in to, to discourage them, because they're so full of love for the squid alien monster that they've got, and they know the name of it, they know the name of its dad, they know where it comes from, they know where it lives, they know what it eats. Um, and when you get to the end, you're pretty much left with the only thing you can say in that circumstance, which is, uh-huh. <laughs> and I, I think it discourages some of them, because what they're expecting is like, oh my gosh, that's amazing, <laughs> which of course it really is. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. In all seriousness, though, I do sometimes ask myself the opposite question, which is, should we be encouraging people to go into games? Is it a good place to be? Are we happy that we're here? Like, some of us are stuck here. Some of us are trying really hard to be here. Some of us are trying really hard to leave by writing novels. But, like, what? <laughs> like on balance, and just as a show of hands, how many people think the games industry is a good place to be right now? <laughs> like... What? That's like 40%, maybe slightly less? I mean, you guys came to a convention about this stuff. Were you hoping that we were going to cheer you up? <laughs> Somebody cheer them up. <laughs> oh, <look at> <laughs> I'm the professional cynic. That's my role in this drama. <laughs> uh, well, my advice... <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Uh, yeah, so my advice to the child I was going to be... <laughs> that. Um, yeah, about sort of leaving your dreams in tatters. Because, yeah, so listening to this, this podcast, I don't know why the Baroque's come up again. So I was listening to this podcast about the British Baroque and how Christopher Wren rebuilt London after the fire of London. And uh, it was talking about St Paul's and how he, you know, it was this masterpiece of Baroque, British Baroque architecture. But he had this maquette of what he actually wanted to build, which is, um, and it, there's this wooden maquette of this amazing St Paul's that he wanted to build. But the sort of city planners were like, no, we just want something now. That's going to take ages. It's going to be really expensive. It looks really cool, but... Uh, we can't build this, Chris. So we're gonna. <laughs> so he had to come up with St Paul's Cathedral, and he thought St Paul's Cathedral was the greatest failure of his life because it wasn't this <laughs> beautiful maquette that he had in his mind. And I was like, it made this question made me think of that that we're all basically Christopher Wren. <laughs> we think we're going to make this amazing, beautiful cathedral with all these spires and things, but there's always someone. Sometimes it's ourselves if we're indie developers and we're our own boss and we're like, we're going to have to cut all those spires and just make the little cottage. <laughs> 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 so that's what I'd say. <laughs> um, I have two answers. Uh, my first answer is specific to our particular niche being adventure games, and I would say to the child, do you like Broken Sword and Monkey Island? Good, because that's, those are the only two games you'll ever hear about when you're presenting <laughs> your game. It's either going to remind people of Broken Sword or it's going to remind them of Monkey Island. Maybe both. I don't know. Anyway, uh, for my second answer, can we swear on this panel? Yeah. Bloody <laughs> All right. For the, for the general games industry, I would write back to the child and I would say, you little shit, you made my game look like crap, I've been playing these games for 20 years, I hope you die, and then I would, 
I would ask their parent, did your child cry when reading this letter? And if they didn't, then I would say, all right, maybe think about getting into the game. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so much. Then, You're then like, like, yeah, like, uh, prepare to kill your darlings right. and kill them a lot, and descope, and do you have the budget for that, and um, a lot of, I guess, crunch and all that. So, if not, like, like, no work, no game. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a lovely place, I swear. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is time for question three, which is a slightly more involved question, because I wrote it. So, <laughs> the film, this is more of a comment than a question. Um, <laughs> the film director, Alexander McKendrick, <laughs> wrote a collection of slogans for a screenwriter's wall. Uh, one of the examples is, screenplays come in three sizes, too long, much too long, and very much too long. My question to you is, what would your slogans for a dev's desktop be? I'm going to put that to you, Jade. Cool. I, I actually have an answer for this one. Um, maybe not dev, but um, I actually maybe maybe can be dev adjacent, but just like, like are you saving? <laughs> like, 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 have you saved your project? Um, because there will, there will come a time when something will happen, your project will crash, and then that kind of like drop dead like heart in your throat moment where you just go, oh, has it saved? So yeah, that was probably my, my slogan would be like, have you saved yet? And then maybe more of a uh, audio adjacent one would be like more reverb or something, more compression, I don't know. Yeah, that, more everything basically, but first and foremost, like have you saved? <laughs> That'd be me. Mine would be something to the effect of, it'll always take three times longer than you think it will. Um, <laughs> Because I've found that to be very true. It's short and simple answer, but it's, that would be my slogan. Ironically, that took less time than I thought your answer was going to take. <laughs> Shella, do you have a slogan for us? A slogan um, be something like, no good sentence begins with, have you ever thought of? Um, <laughs> and this is for writers, because you always get that uh, person from a completely different discipline who's like, I've literally had someone describe a thesaurus to the writing team. <laughs> 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 and then someone else uh, went into the intricacies of the coolness of the naming system in Magic the Gathering. Um, <laughs> as feedback. And it's like, yeah, so it's like, you know, have you ever thought of like other words for trees and stuff like this. There's like, th a thesaurus has like loads of words. For yeah, it's like, this is the things that actually happen to writers on game team. So yeah, no good sentence ever begins with, have you ever thought of? John, have you ever thought of an answer to the question? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, do, I do have an answer for this, actually. Yeah, I think the, well, first, I used to work at Sony PlayStation, and there was a, a colleague of mine who did have a sticker on his desk, and it said, add more grenades. <laughs> um, we worked on uh, a first-person shooter, we worked on a life sim about being a teenager, we worked on an ecology game, we worked on a party game about dressing up and dancing, and it was always add more grenades. And if you asked him, he would say, well, it's a metaphorical grenade. <laughs> so, you know, in a dance context, what is the grenade? You have to sort of think and become the grenade. That isn't advice that I took with me <laughs> into my independent <laughs> career. Um, my, my Slogan, I don't have it on my desk, but it's there in my head the whole time, is make it stop. <laughs> um, which which I, I want to drill into just a little, a little, a little um, because it's good advice, actually. When you're building something, you need to be thinking the whole time, how, can I, how am I going to make this stop? Like, if I'm setting up a plot, how am I going to make it stop? How am I going to get to the end of this thing? If I'm making a mechanic with a crafting loop that goes yada, 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 how is it going to stop? How is this bit of code that I'm building ever going to stop? When will it ever work? When will the testing process finish? If I make it like this, will it be possible to ever finish the testing process? How do I make it stop? <laughs> because as, especially as a self-funded indie, once you embark on a project, if you cannot make it stop, you cannot do it. You can't accept that. That's unacceptable. It's the single most strong fail condition for an indie is five and a half years later, 
still not having finished yet, saying to everybody, it's going to be fine. <laughs> because eventually, you know, Google will cancel Stadia, PlayStation will kill the PlayStation 5, the Steam will eventually collapse, all empires do fall, and if you haven't shipped yet, you're in big trouble. <laughs> so, um, yeah, make it stop. Some random billionaire might buy your only means right. of, of marketing. Absolutely, and suddenly you can't sell your game to anybody. Yeah, yeah no, these are serious problems. In the spirit of please make it stop, I'm going to continue this panel because uh, we've got loads of time left. Uh, this is question four. This is the last question before I throw it over to the audience. So it's 2022, and adventure games are still not dead. <laughs> How do we kill them? Um, not to take um, the advice of make it stop, just have endless walking cycles. That will never stop. <laughs> maybe, maybe that will kill them. <laughs> maybe. Have Elon Musk buy them. <laughs> and add NFTs. <laughs> wow, tough room. <laughs> I thought you'd be on my side. Jeez, oh, sorry. Go on. <laughs> I guess mine's kind of the same theme. Um, I guess make them open world multiplayer games. <laughs> And then you can have a system where um, there's a way of marking you out as like a more valuable member of that community. And maybe we could charge you like 20 quid for it. <laughs> but maybe eight, that's a <laughs> um, But, you know, because game devs obviously need to pay the bills. So, um, yeah. How do we kill adventure games? Like what makes an adventure game an adventure game? Is it, is it fundamentally about having a story? So we could make stories that go on forever and get more and more repetitive and boring as you get further and further through the, through the adventure. Maybe we could get an AI to generate endless, meaningless content that never escalates in scale. Maybe we can make sure the stakes always get littler and littler and littler. <laughs> so I was saving the world, but actually the world's OK, so I'm just saving Basingstoke now. But actually, <laughs> Basingstoke's fine. So now I'm just going to save the flat of my mate Steve. And actually, Steve's doing all right, so I'm just going to save his microwave. And like, actually, maybe I'm just going to take his microwave, because it might be useful in a puzzle. Um, another way, and what else makes an adventure game? Inventories make adventure games. So we can make inventories much, much bigger. So why don't we have adventure games where you can pick up everything? Like, apps, like, because in, you know, a normal canonical world, right, there's quite a lot of stuff to pick up in this room. And if I've got infinite pockets, I can take all of it. I can take all your shit. I can have, like, 67 pairs of spectacles. I can have lots of watches. Some of them will be Apple watches, so they'll run out of charge in five minutes, so that's not much good. But I can get the coltan from them, maybe build a super mech. That would work. Um, what else makes an adventure game an adventure game? Francesco, you make loads of them. What makes, what defines an adventure game? Well, I can tell you that if you remove inventory from your adventure game, mm -hmm. then that's not an adventure game anymore. Okay. It's a visual novel, okay. apparently. Well, okay. That's okay. what I've been told. <laughs> hey, you, you've done some science. This is excellent. You've I tested mean, this. this. Yeah, no, no, no. I've, I've had people tell me that. Um, let's see. Uh, how do we kill adventure games for real? Uh, have Ron Gilbert make another Monkey Island game, and then there's no hope for the rest of us selling it. The, and have him, you know, sell it every day. I don't know. Just he, he'll become a black hole that will suck in all other adventure He's games. Real beef. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to work this out. I don't. I actually really like Monkey Island. I like to return to Monkey Island. It's just, you know, every indie dev was like, oh no, when they said, here's this, here's the release date. Um, no, I love Monkey Island. I just. I don't like being told that my game looks like Monkey Island, that's all. <laughs> so if anybody played Rosewater and said it looked like Monkey Island, I forgive you. Just, you know. <laughs> just, just not that much. Just, not, just, <laughs> just, yeah, anyway. You can maybe make it subscription based. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh that, I didn't realize that was a really spicy take. <laughs> Would it, it would be like a, like a subscription to a hint line or something. Like, you can only solve the puzzle if you pay $9.99 a month. You said a month. hit line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, like an assassin? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're trying to kill a Oh, right. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You've been working in AAA too long. <laughs> I mean, I've always said, to, to make this completely unrelated, I've always said that Hitman is basically an adventure game, so you could send Agent 47 to kill, kill himself. himself. 
I don't know. I'm going to stop talking now. Alistair's <laughs> losing the world. I cannot stop you from talking. Oh, oh, I know. We could set it in the metaverse. Stop talking. We could set it in the metaverse. I'll, I'll, stop, I'll, make it, I'll stop talking. Just make it stop. Yeah. <laughs> we can set it in the metaverse, and since nobody has legs, they can't walk anywhere. That's true. Yeah, they can just And since adventure games are 98% yeah. walking, it kills them. Yeah. yeah. What I was going to do now is I was going to ask the, the audience to vote on whose idea they think is best, but you've come up with so many ideas. <laughs> it's hard to choose from them. But, but um, uh, so I'm going to recap your names pointlessly and not ask for rounds of applause. I tell you what, I, I will just ask you to applaud them for being great. <laughs> Otherwise, these slides are pointless. And now I'm going to move to a Q&A. Now, you've been very good throughout the, the entire event with questions. We've talked about a wide range of topics. Um, would anyone like to ask a question to our panel? And this bit works way better if you put your hand up. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but nearer. <laughs> um, can you describe your jobs about using the words game, interactive, music, or narrative? We could start with John, and I'll bring the mic down. I'm a writer. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> I write words. <laughs> um, I'm a, a, a guy in his basement who makes things. <laughs> um, I make sounds and noise. Like everyone. <laughs> maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. We all make sounds and noises. <laughs> uh, another question? I think I saw a hand towards... Okay. Test. Ooh. Hello. Um, Hello. So I think to kind of double back to what you... One of those questions was of like, how do we kill adventure games? <laughs> One thing I was talking to, I was talking to someone about, like, um, on Steam, with tagging, uh, adventure is kind of so polluted across so many games. And especially in context of, like, Twitter just doing its own thing or just going somewhere, um, where do you think we're going to go in terms of marketing games and marketing adventure games if we lose Twitter or other social media stuff? Uh, yeah, I think that's a really good question, actually, and quite a serious one. Um, for us indie studios, we don't really have any way of telling anybody about anything apart from Twitter. We shouldn't have let ourselves get into that position, but we did, and here we are. Um, we promote a little bit via Steam, but Steam actually clamps down quite hard on cross-game promotion, so they kind of make that impossible. Then you have streaming. That seems to be big. Um, I'm 40, so I don't understand watching other people play video games, <laughs> especially when I don't have time to play video games myself. That does not make sense to me. But, um, but even so, streaming of adventure games is pretty tricky, right? Because they're plot-based, and that, all advertising is good advertising, but that's definitely not the best advertising. Um, so I don't know. I live in real fear of the idea that I might need to set up a TikTok account and also... <laughs> give a shit about it, um, because that will be very hard for me. Like, I live in awe of the devs that I see doing that. Um, you know, there, there's a few of them who surface it via Twitter, so I see it. Um, and I see how hard they work, and I see them enjoying it and making that space. And perhaps they deserve to take the market from me for the work that they're doing. I'm a better writer than them, though. <laughs> I hope. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really serious challenge. And I, I don't know, it's one of the things I love about Adventure X, one of the things I love about this event is it's one of the few events that's dedicated to the idea that narrative in games deserves to be there and is intrinsically good. And if we can get people together for events like this and in the wider community, maybe we can start talking to each other directly without having to rely on Musk's Musk bucks to be, allow ourselves to do that. Maybe we can just, just actually have some kind of conversation together. That would be very good from where I'm sitting, and hopefully would be very good for everybody else as well. So long live this, but it's probably not solving all the world's problems in this one room quite yet. Well, that's disappointing. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> Shola, uh, are you on Mastodon yet? Do you have uh, plans for, for marketing games beyond Twitter and Steam and all the rest of it? Uh, 
don't. So, yeah, I was a games journalist before I was an indie dev, so games journalists live on Twitter. Um, I'm, not on t I'm also not on TikTok, and, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to have to dance to <laughs> market my games. I like dancing, but, yeah, I don't want to do that to market my games. And it is... Um, <laughs> And it's a real problem for um, marginalized people and um, black, Asian, brown people. T um, Twitter uh, was a real democratizer and gave us access to people, opened doors for us. And, um, you know, there have been conversations amongst us on Twitter about how um, we wouldn't have careers without Twitter because there was so much access given to us. Um, so for that to go away is really concerning and yeah like you said it's um, a serious topic and even more so for um, marginalized people I don't have the solution when I saw Mastodon was um, trending the other day I was I thought of the band I was like oh if they got a new album <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so no yeah I don't know what's gonna happen mm. somebody tell me <laughs> where to go Francisco the answers, please. <laughs> I, I was going to preface by saying that I don't have a solution either, but I have plenty of complaints. Um, I, uh, yeah, like you were saying about tags on Steam, like Grand Theft Auto V is an adventure game. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is an adventure game. So is Tomb Raider. And I think that kind of, uh, it's just such a wide thing. Like there's sub tags like point and click and stuff, but yeah, Steam is just terrible for discoverability now with our particular definition of adventure game, like what we focus on, you know, our people here at Adventure X. Like, we know what adventure game is to us. And I think that kind of ties into just a, a pet peeve that I've had recently where I feel like it's really hard to be taken seriously in the greater industry as a, an adventure game developer because, like, we have this great focused conference on narrative games, but the wider industry as a whole thinks adventure games are either your Grand Theft Autos or your Red Deads or whatever, or they think, oh, adventure games, yeah, those are those annoying things with mazes and, and inventory and moon logic and whatever, and yeah, oh, that's cute, you're making one, but it's not a real game, right? Like, you know, with the exception of like maybe like unavowed, like I can't think of the last point and click adventure that was nominated for like say an IGF award, right? So like, you know, it, it, the recognition in the industry of like, oh, well, you know, this is a legitimate genre. You can tell interesting stories in this genre of the point and click. It's like, no, 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 it's just a cute little thing where you have to make a fishing rod out of a thing and whatever. And that's just been really frustrating me lately. And, uh, I had to rant about it, and thank you <laughs> for giving me the platform to do so. But as far as, yeah, like how to market, I also have no idea. I'm also 40, I don't understand TikTok. I don't want to lip sync or dance or do whatever you do on TikTok. And just the, and I like tried starting a newsletter, but like the idea of just starting on a new platform and building an audience up again from basically zero is just terrifying. And yeah. <laughs> Please give us a happy answer. <laughs> There's something very being 40 about responding to a crisis by starting a newsletter, and I applaud you for that. <laughs> Jade, as a sound designer and, and composer, people actually can dance to your work. <laughs> Are you going to survive this crisis? Well, uh, maybe, maybe we can just start making like really wacky music videos. That, that feature adventure game characters. I don't know. Like, 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 I don't know. Maybe, maybe work with more like Gen Zers or something like that. Be like, like, here's the content, do something creative with it, and then do it like that. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a really, really weird bridge of like, make it entertaining and then people will watch. But also, people just don't have the attention span. They have like maybe the attention span of what, 15, 30 seconds usually. That's like. The I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, the, the TikTok videos are just that amount, I think, and then, you know, constant consuming of fresh stuff. So, I don't know, maybe music videos. <laughs> that, that'll, that'll be cool, or just, I, I don't know, may, maybe from a music angle, just like, more music stuff, and then we can do cover albums. I don't know. <laughs> 
M maybe. Uh, it, that would be nice, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, that didn't answer your question. <laughs> Does anyone have a question that will be less depressing to answer than the previous <laughs> question? Okay. Here we, here we come. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this row. The nearest person wins. So to completely go away from all that and have something a little bit more fun, I would like to know where, what your kind of god mode inventory item would be, uh, combining sort of like two or three of your favorite things. So yeah, I didn't quite get the, god, our god mode what, sorry? Uh, uh, the ultimate what, what, oh, oh. What are your favorite things, what things would you combine to create the ultimate inventory item? Has, has the word fish magnet made that any clearer? <laughs> I believe the question is, uh, what are your favorite things that you would jam together to create the ultimate infantry item? Um, I've said it three times now, it's not making Sorry. any more sense. My, 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 <laughs> my brain is in? completely blanked and it's saying wine with fish. White wine with fish. That's what I've That's got. a meal. I know, I That's think... It. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> It's like my first huge conference in like three years, <laughs> and it's like the very end. I don't know. Like, well, I hope you're happy. <laughs> we look at these <laughs> hard-working devs and writers. <laughs> you're asking weird questions to, and I know I started it. But this is a shame. Uh, Jade Francisco, you don't have to. You don't have to answer all the questions. <laughs> Would so, you like to? No. No. Okay. <laughs> wait. 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 So, so, for Claire, so just to make sure I got this, what two things would we, I merge together to make the ultimate thing? Yeah. yeah. Broken sword and monkey eyelids. <laughs> and so Francesco, you're doing that right now. <laughs> what can I say? I've become, I've lived long enough to see myself become the villain. <laughs> On that note, with the mention of the only two good adventure games, in existence, um, I'm going to invite you to join me in thanking our panel. A huge round of applause, please. <laughs> <laughs>